Good day, race fans! I'm on Silent and we're on the air with Grand Prix 2, the 1996 racing sim about the 1994 Formula 1 World Championship. And thanks very much for tuning in. You guys have turned this into my most popular Let's Play on the channel right now. And you know what? I feel like I've let you guys down a little bit, everyone that's been tuning in lately, because I haven't won a race yet through the first 11 races of the season. Can we do it in round 12? It's the Gran Premio d'Italia, the Italian Grand Prix from the Autodromo Nazionale Monza. Getting to work out a little bit of my Italian there. It's one of the last temples of speed in the world. 5.8 kilometers in this configuration, an average lap speed of 150 miles per hour for pole. Spoilers, that was, I calculated out if I got it right. Definitely a fast track, top speeds over 200 miles per hour and uh, closer to 210 in the slipstream. Now, if you're looking at the track map here, you might notice it's a little different than what we have now. It's mostly the same as what we have now, except for the front straight chicane, the Varianti del Retifolo. It's left, right, left, right here, as opposed to the really slow and really ungainly right, left. I know it's a passing opportunity now, but it kind of destroys the flow of the track. Mind you, you could say it's ever been ever since they put in those chicanes. But for the first time on this Let's Play, we're going to go to F1 2017, and we're going to take a look at the then versus now of Monza 94 versus Monza 2017. And we'll do it in the successor to the Jordan team, the Force India. Pink with my number 12 and my black, gold, and red helmet. Break down all the way to second gear, 60 kilometers an hour to go through that right and then left before powering back up to the Curva Grande. This will change for next year as well again. So we'll have to do this all over again. 203 miles per hour break just before the 100 meter board. All the way down to about 70 miles an hour here. A little faster through the turns. It's not any less of a braking opportunity and probably less chaos at the first chicane off the start as well. But before we get into the track action, let's take a look at the standings. It's David Coulthard, 49 points up on Michael Schumacher for the World Drivers' Championship. 50 points he needed this gap coming into this race. We only needs 40 coming out of it to win the title. And Damon Hill just one point back. Schumacher, Alacy two points behind that. I'm Eddie Irvine, 25 points on the season seven ahead of Gerhard Berger. Good battle for seventh shaping up with Ukyo Kariyama on nine points. Mika Hakkinen one point back of that. Rubens Barrichello two points back of that. That battle for seventh. That's going to be a good one to monitor. And then here we go. The World Constructors Championship not quite done. Effectively done a 75 point gap from Williams to Ferrari. But you need to have 80 coming into this race in order to clinch 64 coming out of it. And then a little farther back to Benetton and Jordan, which I'm driving for. Tyrrell and McLaren, one point apart. There's the World Constructors Championship battle to keep your eyes on if you're keeping uh, keep a track of these championship battles in my Grand Prix 2 sim. On to Friday qualifying. We're throwing you right into the Parabolica on my first qualifying run. Here we go, charging up to the line, and it is a 127-2 P1 provisionally on Friday qualifying, which actually would have been pretty good. I think that would have been fastest on Friday morning practice, but as we pull back into the bits, you can already see I've dropped a second, and as the scoreboard comes up, yeah, I'm two tenths of a second behind DC, perhaps more interestingly, I'm two seconds ahead of Rubens, so it's uh, pretty quick at the point. Now we come to my second or third qualifying run, rather, and here I am stuck behind one of the Simtex. Get a good run out of the Parabolica. But hopefully I got a little good draft. We'll see as we come to the line. It is a 127-126. A tenth and a half better, but still only good for position number two on Friday qualifying. Maybe I could have done better if the Simtech wasn't in the way. Maybe I got a little draft into Parabolica and a little bit of draft out of Parabolica from him. We won't know. But I'm P2 on Friday, nine, ten, nine hundredths of a second behind David Coulthard. Schumacher two tenths behind that, two tenths farther back of him is Damon Hill, so the top four are within a half second, not too bad. Lacey and Berger right in the, behind us, Hakkinen and Katayama, Barrichello, 7th, 8th, ninth in the championship, 7th, 8th, ninth in the grid provisionally. Jasper Stapp with a good qualifying effort for his 
standards. 10th on Friday, Johnny Herbert right behind him. Martin Brundle, P14. Missing from this equation, Ligier Renault, who I'm surprised weren't doing a little better. That Renault engine, powering Coltart, powering Hill, was very fast in a straight line, very fast in the Ligiers at the Hockenheim ring, but for some reason, not in Grand Prix 2's Grand Prix version of Monza. It was not particularly strong. I'm not entirely sure what happened there. On to Saturday qualifying. Oh, we're in trouble. We're stuck behind a Lotus and a Minardi. Now, we've got a good slipstream here. Coming to Parabolic as we hone in on the Lotus of Herbert. 2.06 before I hit the brakes. Having to wool up quite a bit. Bump into Herbert on the way out. But as we come up to the line, we're going to get a little bit of slipstream off the Minardi. 200 miles an hour at the line. And it's P1. 126.8.7.2. At the line, that is good enough for provisional P1, but there is still time left in the session. Now on board with David Coulthard in the Williams as he comes out of Parabolica. He doesn't have traffic in his way. What will the Williams Renault do as we come to the line? It's going to be a 126, 875 to my 872, three thousandths of a second between us for pole position for the Italian Grand Prix blink and you miss it at 200 miles per hour at the line that is worth about all of like eight inches so you might not be able to tell that that's an Indy car finish right there as there's the starting grid for the Italian Grand Prix from Monza 13 laps one quarter race distance as I am on pole, Zeddie Irvine, three thousandths ahead of David Coulthard, leaving Michael Schumacher and Damon Hill in row two in the dust. Schumacher almost four tenths of a second behind me, and Hill closer to six tenths behind me. Row three, the two Ferraris, Alessi and Berger, they were on the front row. Front row Ferrari lockout in the actual 94 Italian Grand Prix. Row four, Hakkinen and Katayama. Remember I was telling you about that battle for P7 in the World Drivers' Championship. Hakkinen, Katayama on row four, right behind them. Row five, Rubens Barrichello. So big battle brewing there. Johnny Herbert, P10, his best start of the season. Lotus came with a upgraded Mugen Honda engine in real life. Johnny qualified P4 in real life. Johnny Morbidelli in P11, home race, good qualifying there. And Olivier Pan, as we were talking about the speed of those DJ Renaults, he's in P12. Niels Verstappen was 10th after Friday and drops down to 13th in the grid. It's Pierre Luigi Martini in the Italian driver, Italian car, Minardi Ford in P14. Martin Brundle fell off the first page of the timing screens from 14th to 15th on Saturday. And Eric Coma on the first of the LaRusse Fords, P16. Michele Alberetto, another Italian driver in an Italian car, the Minardi Ford, alongside Eric Bernard. Car 24, next to Car 25. Andrea the Cesaris, the Sabre Mercedes was much better in real life. 19th is not quite simulation speed, although the P20 for Mark Blundell in the Tyrrell Yamaha might be a little more realistic. Heinz Harold Frenson, P21 in the second of the Sabre Mercedes, alongside Christian Fittibaldi in the second footwork Fords. Then behind them, Alex Zanardi, who should have done better, then P23 in the Lotus Mugen Honda alongside Olivier Barretta in the uh, the LaRousse Ford, sorry. And then the last row of the grid, you're used to this. David Brabham, P25, and shotgun on the field, John Paul Belmondo starting from position number 26. The warning horn goes. The engines come to life. It's race time in Grand Prix 2 for Red Light. Revs come up, we bring the noise, and green, green, green for the Italian Grand Prix, and a dreadful start as I'm instantly back to position number five from Paul. Oh, how dreadful, a late move across by Hill, and I bump into him, and chaos ensues in turn one. What was I saying about the new configuration being worse for turn one incidents? Yeah, well, you can tell based on the uh, ants in my rear view mirror, as that uh, certainly caused a bit of a gap, and DC and I break away. As I bump into Hill, bump, he collects Schumacher, bounds back across the hit track, collects Lacey, and there goes a Lotus. As we track Schumacher through this melee, as he comes back on from the gravel, he gets collected by Berger there, falls back to P5. Herbert was up to P3, but uh, didn't last past the Curva Grande. It's into Variante della Raggia. He goes, uh, loses his spot to Hakkinen. Into Lesbos, here goes Lacey, and thinks better of it. 
Not that that lasted very long, as we come down to Variante Ascari, down in the back straight, and the Lacey goes up the inside, and into position number four, as we come back up to the front of the grid, up to the point, I'm in P2, into Parabolica, but I think I'm running a little more downforce than Coltard, because I get an absolutely worldly exit out of Parabolica, and instantly buy him. Meanwhile, Johnny Herbert falls yet another place. Poor Johnny. Great start, but uh, the speed of the Lotus Mugen Honda was showing itself as the race progressed as we reached the end of lap two. As much as I think I have good downforce coming out of Parabolica, sometimes less wing, a little trimmer car, helps out a little bit. As you see DC mow by me on the left as we go to the external cam. Last of the late breakers just as he forces me onto the bad line through Varianti del Retifolo. Once again, pretty even into the turn, but coming out of the first part of the chicane, it was all DC as he had the preferred line. Lap three through the Lesmos. I catch up DC pretty good into the first one. As we come through the second one, hold station, don't lose any time through the curves in the dirty air as we go up slipstream 208 as we pull out under braking for a scar and oh I've overcooked it last of the late breakers a bit too late on the brakes as we take another look again I don't know why I put a replay of that mistake in I probably should have cut that <laughs> oh well as we come to the end of lap four and ah not too bad a second faster than DC on that lap we're gonna catch him up pretty quick at that pace the gaps down to one and a half seconds after the one third distance mark as we come to the halfway mark after lap seven it's down to under a second point eight of a second to DC and as we come up to the end of lap 10 we are right on DC's tail through Parabolic, a great exit, and all the slipstream in the world. Watch that speedo climb 203 before we even get to the starting grid lines as we draft by into position number one with three laps to go. Lap 12, here we go out of the Lesmos. Not a good exit out of the Lesmos as there is Coltard right in my mirror. I'm holding down the middle, trying to block him. He dives up the inside and oh, we touch into Ascari. It's a touch going through the left and I'm spinning in the grass. And there goes Hill. Not only do I lose the lead, I lose second as well. Oh, the horror. It's all gone horribly wrong as we take a look at the replay. There goes Coltard in and out of the slipstream. He's going up the inside and uses me as a break for Ascari. I didn't have a prayer. I had... He was in front of me, but he could not have made that turn if I wasn't there. He was going into the gravel without me, so yeah, you're welcome, DC. That race is yours because of me. Same lap out of Parabolica. We're going by Hill for position number two. You know, most people do it on the slipstream into the first chicane. I was doing it out of Parabolica. On the last lap out of Lesmo. Here's a familiar move shaving up D Damon all over the back of me. Go deep into Ascari, deep as I dare, but it compromises the exit out of Ascari. And Hill starts to look up the inside as we head down to Parabolica. The speed of the Williams, I'm going to squeeze him for all it's worth. As I come to the inside, he's going to go to the outside, but he runs out of room. He's gone and pushed too hard into Parabolica. And frees it up for me to pick up second place for the second straight Grand Prix. Well, that wasn't great, but not too bad either as we come up. Oh, here's DC stranded across the track. Hi. As I bump into him, I swear that wasn't entirely my fault as we take a look at the replay for that last sector. Force Damon as wide as I can. He tries to hold it around the outside. Looks like he gets just a bit of grass, which kills his home momentum and lets me through for position number two as we come across the line. Take the checkered flag. I still love the old-timey checkered flag guy on the track here. But I don't notice all those flags. The salute's not a salute, it's yellow flags. Slow down, slow down, because there's Coltard right in front of me. I get a bump from Hill, probably for the first lap incident, as I bump into DC for the lap 12 incidents. He just overcooked it in Varianti del Retifolo. If he had one more lap on that race, that race was mine. But here are the final results for the Italian Grand Prix. David Coulthard wins yet again. What is this, like his ninth or tenth win in a row? Something ridiculous like that. 
Uh, it's not that many, but it feels like it at this point. I finished in second. I figured that spin was probably worth about 10 seconds to DC. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Damon Hill right behind me. Schumacher right behind us. If we had tangled, he was coming through for P2, and two Ferraris round out the points. Then you've got Rubens in seventh. Johnny Herbert was his highest third finish in eighth. Still a good result for the Lewis Mugen Honda. Yoss makes his way up to ninth. Olivier Pan is up to P10. On to the second page of results. Heinz Harold Frensen had an engine failure, but he was the only one. Martin Brundle also had an engine failure. His car came to a stop on the front straight, coming out of Parabolica. So close to getting a decent result for Martin, but instead, it's a retirement. Oh, still classified. Doesn't really take the sting out. Here's the results, at, or the standings after 12 rounds. It's all over. David Coulthard has won with a 56-point gap over Michael Schumacher. That has clinched him the title, but it's all play for down behind him. It's dead even between Schumacher and Hill. On count back, it goes to Schumacher. Then you've got a Lacey, four points behind that. I'm actually kind of doing okay against the Lacey on 10 points behind that. And only the top six in the points scored points this time out. So no change from 7th through 13th. And same thing here. Nobody behind my Jordan team scored points, so 5th through 8th is the same as it was. Williams clinches this Constructors title as they did in real life. With an 86-point gap coming out of this, they only needed 64. And now it's all the fight for for second. Can Ferrari hold on to second ahead of Benetton? We'll wait and see. But if Yoss isn't going to score points, this is not likely to happen. But still, 4 races to go. Anything can happen in the world of Grand Prix racing and we'll find out that next time at round 13 the Portuguese Grand Prix from the Estoril circuit if you've been watching my Formula 1 2013 videos the F1 Classics Edition videos I uh, did the Estoril circuit the Portuguese Grand Prix in a last to first challenge with the 1996 Williams so I'm kind of familiar with the circuit not a great overtaking circuit. You've got two-ish, maybe three overtaking opportunities if you're daring. I don't like, though, one change from what I race to what's going to be here in Grand Prix 2. Is at the top just right of center, you've got that uh, annoying looking hairpin as opposed to the big flowing. It's a very flowy circuit, but that uh, it's a very ugly looking left hand hairpin there so i'm not looking forward to that but this is a fun circuit in f1 2013 so i'm looking forward to playing it here in grand prix 2 hopefully i'll get used to the keyboard controls and the lower downforce of these 1994 formula 1 cars how will this turn out for me well you just have to tune in in two weeks time round 13 the portuguese grand prix can i score my first win this time well the way my luck has been probably not but yeah i can only race to find out and that's in two weeks' time. So thanks once again for joining me for this journey through old games, this time with Grand Prix 2. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you're new or you want to see more Grand Prix 2 or classic racing games. Share on social media. Follow on social media. The social media handle is Unsilent on air. And until the next time, I'm Unsilent. Thanks very much for joining me. Like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next time.